Hey YouTube fans, it's Mike Palumbo again, and this is my inaugural, my very first video on my uh, culinary council series. I'm going to bring to you the uh, the recipes that I that I love that I love to make throughout the year. I'm not a chef, but I'm a really good cook. I don't like eating out a lot. I don't like, like eating bad. I love to eat, as you can tell. We can all tell, but I don't like eating crappy food. I don't like eating processed food. I don't like doing takeout a lot, and I cook at home for myself a lot, all the time. I do go out to dinner. Who doesn't go out to dinner? But this is this is uh, my mainstay, and I'm my inaugural, in my very first video, I'm doing Manhattan Clam Chowder, because about a few weeks ago, I put a very brief video of the finished product of my Manhattan Clam, clam Chowder, just for a goof onto, onto Facebook, and um, onto YouTube, and people loved it. Uh, they just loved it. They're commenting on it, so I'm bringing this to you first. This is my uh, very first video. Um, and what gave me, gave me the inspiration to do the Manhattan clam chowder was, like I said, I love, I love making soups. And I make a really good tomato soup. My daughter loves it. I love it. It's just perfect. But what I don't like about it, like I don't like about any soups, I like to have stuff in the soup. I don't like, just like a soup that's just a soup. Like I like chicken noodle, bean soup, split pea soup has ham in it. You know, I like, I like my soups you know, to have something in them. Um, but the tomato soup doesn't have anything in it. I use it with, with my t tomatoes, fresh tomatoes from the garden, which we're gonna use today. These are fresh, these are, I freeze them when I pick them from the garden. I have a huge garden that I, I get plum tomatoes and for the very purpose of freezing them. You can see more about that later. Um, and I'll make my soups out of it. But my daughter and I love this, this tomato soup that I make. But I, I was just bored of it, you know. So I said, you know what? Let me do Manhattan clam chowder. It's basically it's a, it's a tomato soup base, and man, it's been it's been a home run. Now, for most soups and almost any soups, you always want to start with this trilogy of um, carrots, uh, celery, and onions. Now I got potatoes here too. This, this recipe calls for potatoes. So, but if you have if you have this in your in your refrigerator, and a lot of times you're missing the celery because it goes it goes bad faster. But onions and carrots stay a long time, so you don't have the celery. You know, you can make yourself a nice bean soup, a nice chicken noodle soup, a nice vegetable soup. You know, just with that and with chicken broth, or you use the bouillon cubes. But this is is a, is a base. Um, we're going to use the uh, some chicken broth. I about I got about half left. That's what it calls for, and about the volume of what I'm making here. Um, and really, I use it as a boiling medium because my, my tomatoes are, are frozen. So I got to boil them and I'll puree them. You'll see me do that. Um, now, now, if you don't have fresh tomatoes, you know, or most people don't, this is what you use. San Marzano, listen, if you're ever going to make sauce, you're going to ever make tomato soup, you're going to ever make anything that needs a, a, a tomato sauce, go always get the San Marzano certified uh, uh, plum tomatoes. This is 28 ounces. All right. Now, this happens to be organic. It's certified. Uh, yeah, this happens to be organic. It doesn't necessarily have to be organic. I always keep these around for an emergency because my frozen tomatoes that I grow from the garden, they're going to last me till sometime in the spring. I'm going to be out. Or sometimes, you know, in a pinch, maybe I don't want to defrost it. It's going to take me a little longer to make the soup by using my frozen um, tomatoes. A little bit longer. If I'm in a pinch, I just want to mix them up real quick. I'll, I'll go. This, this is the go-to. I always got them on standby. Now, for, for what I'm making here, you're probably going to use two two of these cans. If you have, just have the cans, the way, the way I'm making it here, you're going to use two of these cans. So, you got that. Obviously, your, your clams from Manhattan Clam Chowder. Now, this, again, isn't 100% authentic. It's not 100% authentic. I get it. Uh, the problem, about, and you should, you know, if you can, you should go out and get fresh clams. I'd say about two dozen for what we're doing here. Um, the problem is you, they can't, you can't keep clams. Like if you get clams now, you got to use them in six, eight, eight hours. Yeah. Keep them on ice. I wouldn't trust clams overnight. And again, you know, you come home, you're in a pinch, you want to make something good. You know, you keep, keep a, can, a couple cans of clams, you, clams. You could always make this. It doesn't really, doesn't really take away from it all that much. Uh, you know, which is what, what I like about this recipe, pretty much you can have everything on standby and decide, you know what, I want to make some Manhattan clam chowder tonight. So you got your clams, of course, uh, clam juice, a, a couple, I, I would say two of these for the volume I'm making here, uh, clam juice, um, 
what else we got here? You need a little olive oil. Okay, you want to saute some garlic, so I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, I said chicken stock. I think I said chicken stock already. Now, again, you really, you're probably better off going with a seafood stock if you're making a Manhattan clam chowder. And if I had seafood stock, I would have used it, but I was, you know, the chicken stock is fine. Um, a little salt and pepper, red hot pepper flakes, salt, pepper. Uh, this is one of my secret ingredients, anchovies. I, I, I'll take, for the amount I'm, I'm using here, I'll take one, one of these uh, anchovies and I'll throw it in as I'm making the soup. It gives it a nice seafood flavor, a nice salty flavor. And I think it's, it really, it really bring you, you, it really brings out the uh, the oceanness, the 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 clam chowderness of it. Uh, also, I use uh, Zerani, Zeranians, whatever it is, uh, clam boil, shrimp and clam boil. Okay, um, I get got this on eBay, um, on, on Amazon. You get soup market, and literally like maybe a tablespoon. It's it's concentrated. You don't need a lot. Um, use Obey. You could, you, could, you, could, you could season it with Old Bay, Old Bay. Um, to thicken it up, so a little bit of tomato paste. And uh, my secret ingredient is hot sauce. Okay, now I probably put like, I'll put like half a cup of hot sauce in here. Not gonna tell you which one. Cause it, cause that, that I, the, the, the hot sauce that I use for mine, I think makes mine, mine. I've used a different, couple of different hot sauces, all over the counter hot sauces. Okay. Nothing special. Um, some people, I don't use Tabasco. I'll tell you, it's not Tabasco sauce. Nothing wrong with it. I, I it's not me, but it's a, uh, it's a standard one. It's a, you can find it in a supermarket and experiment, you know, make yours your own. You don't have to, you don't have to mimic mine. Right. So with, with what I'm making here, about half a cup, you don't want to overwhelm it with the hot sauce. You're going to use your hot pepper flakes. Um, what I forgot to pull out, which I'll, I'll, I'll show you later, uh, garlic. So we're going to start off by sauteing garlic with the hot pepper flakes to start getting that spicy, that spice going and get the, a little bit of that garlic flavor going. And then, you know, then we'll proceed from there. But you see that as I proceed, I've talked enough. Now I'm at the first step. What we have to do is we have to dice these, uh, these vegetables. What about that? The magic of TV, just like that. Everything's diced up nicely. Now, a word about the potatoes. Whenever you use potatoes at home to make something like fresh French fries, or anytime you're gonna cut into a potato and then cook it, other than just baking it, um, you slice it or you dice it, you make home fries, or like I said, home, homemade uh, maybe potato chips or homemade uh, uh, French fries. Whenever you do that, what you should, what you have to do is you got to rinse the potato because it releases starch. You can't see it, but this is like a little bit slimy. Whenever you cut a, a raw potato, it releases the starch in it and it makes it slimy. And if you go and saute right away or try to fry it or, or make something, you know, potato chips or French fries or home fries out of it, it doesn't cook right. However, I'm making this in a soup. So, so I, I, I want this starch. I'm not going to rinse the starch off because I want the starch because it flavors a little bit the tomatoes. And it also, uh, it also thickens the soup. So I'm not going to rinse them off. But if you want to make them in anything else but soup, you got to rinse them off or else they won't come right. Okay, it's Culinary Council. I'm back. And what I'm doing here is uh, we just put a few t tablespoons of olive oil into our, uh, into our pot where we're going to make the soup. And it's just starting to come up to heat. And once it gets, it gets warmed up, it's up to heat. And the first thing you put your garlic in. And listen, let's listen to that sizzle, folks. I mean, come on. Nothing like garlic and oil. I mean, I could put a little butter in here, make a little macaroni, and that's it. Spaghetti all year. Spaghetti with, spaghetti with garlic and oil. Throw a little butter in here. That's my sauce. Boil some, some macaroni. Take a tablespoon of the water, put it in with the sauce. And, I mean, that, that, that in itself is a meal. I mean, that right there is a meal. Garlic and oil. Now, very important. All right, very, very important that if you want to spice something up, you put it in the cooking medium. So I like the, I, I like a, a spicy um, Manhattan clam chowder. Everyone does. I start my red hot pepper flakes. I put it into the cooking medium. My son taught me this. You don't do it after the fact. Put it right into the cooking medium, right into your olive oil. That's, that's the point where you're going to get the most essence and the most flavor. You know, it's going to release the, um, the, uh, the heat. 
of the um, of the red hot peppers uh, uh, the, the most. And this is almost ready. And if you can see, I'm sure you can see the uh, the olive the uh, the, the garlic is is, is turning. Um, it's turning brown, but it's not burnt yet. You don't want to burn it. You want to turn it brown. This is the point where you start, you put your, your chicken broth in. It's going to sizzle a little bit. That's okay. And you put your clam juice in at this point. Now, now, you, now you're using this, you know, for soup and for flavor. But you're also going to use it, which is very important, to start defrosting the... Uh, tomatoes and a little word about my tomatoes okay people use fresh tomatoes they process them in different ways the way I do it I just take them off the vine and I freeze them skin on and everything I used to take the skin off and I don't do that because if I wanted to use some of these tomatoes but not all of them they're very easy to handle if, if you take the skin off and then you freeze them it, it freezes as a clump but these things they feel like and they and they have the consistency of uh, of uh, billiard balls so I can use the whole thing, or I can use part of them. Now, once you freeze them, you can't use them for anything else but sauces and soups. They're no good for anything else because they, they, it destroys, like, the uh, there's a lot of water in, in the tomato. But the skin's going to get destroyed, which is good because I don't have to, like, basically take the skin off like a lot of people do. And we throw them right in. We throw them right in. And as, the, this, as this broth heats up, it starts to frost the tomatoes. And as you can see, I got some, all my tomatoes are heirloom tomatoes. I, I, I start them from seed every year. I live in New York, Lower Hudson Valley. I start them right, I start, put them in like late April from seed and they grow like weeds. I don't start them inside. I don't go to a garden center. I get heirloom tomato seeds from Eden. As you can see here, this is yellow and this is not a plump tomato. A bunch of ones in here aren't plump tomatoes. What I do is I mostly use my plump tomatoes and my sauces. And the other ones that come out a little cockeyed, like this one here, I put them in, I, I, I freeze them with, with the uh, plump tomatoes for my sauce. So it's going to take a little bit of a while to start to boil. And uh, as it starts to boil, I'm going to, I'm going to hit it with my immersion blender to, uh, to basically puree and blend it up. So we're going to come back when, um, when things get a little more exciting. Okay, now what we got going on here. It's not to a boil yet. It's been on about 10 minutes. As you can see, the um, tomatoes are really starting to break down. They're really, they're really breaking down here. It's not, not at a boil yet. At this point, I'm going to put in my anchovies with the oil and everything. Just throw it all in here. You know, at this point, we're putting in anything we, we want to blend in, blend together. Because, um, and put, I guess, a couple of tablespoons of tomato paste to help thicken it up. I always, I just eyeball it. I'll be honest with you. I just eyeball it. That's how I do it. Okay, here's the immersion bl blender. It's a very, uh, very useful tool. Stick it at the bottom because it, it will splash right. You want to get it to the bottom so it's, it's pressed against the bottom. It creates a suction and things suck in through it. You got to hold the button down. Just tilt it. Things are being sucked in and things are being sucked in and blended. Too crazy now, you know. Get it all over. Now there's always going to be some stragglers. I just trap those sons of guns, you know. He's a bummer. Anyhow, I'm going to finish blending this up, and then we'll uh, we'll come back for the next steps. Okay, now as you can see, we have it on a rolling boil, and you want to let it stay on a rolling boil for a little while because you want to thicken it up. You don't want it the consistency of water, and you also don't want it the consistency. Of uh, tomato sauce, spaghetti sauce. So you want to, you know, you just want to get it to to a little bit, a little bit thicker. That's why I put the thickening agent and I put the uh, tomato paste. In. You can also use anchovy paste. I have anchovy paste too, but I didn't use it because I used the fresh anchovies or the canned anchovies. At this point, I'm going to throw in the Zaranas shrimp and crab boil, about a tablespoon. You don't got to use a lot. It really gives it that ocean fresh taste, that that seafood type type taste. Salt. You don't got to use this ton of salt because the anchovies have salt in them. And, um, and also you're using um, celery, which, is, which has actually a, a fair amount of salt in it. Salt and pepper. I like 
a lot of pepper. Again, I, everything I do is eyeball. Just I eyeball it, you know? Well, maybe it doesn't come out exactly the same from batch to batch, but believe me, wish you were here just smelling this as it is now, you know? So, it's boiling off. And my next step is I'm going to put my vegetables in. And what I do is, what I check to see if it's if the vegetables are ready. I check the um, the cat the carrots. They take the longest to cook. So when the carrots are to to your liking, as it pertains to um, you know how hard they are, um, I don't like them that very al dente. I like them. I don't like them too hard. I like I don't like them too mushy, but I just like them uh, not hard. Uh, you know. Uh, that's when I, I really lower the heat. That's when I'm, I'm saying, okay, it's, it's done cooking. But we're going to bring this back up to a boil, and then we'll uh, show you the, the final steps. Okay, so now we brought it back to a nice rolling boil. And what it's doing, it's cooking the vegetables. And that's why I put them in last. I don't want them to get overcooked. Not just cooking the vegetables, it's uh, also still steaming down. I think you can see it on the screen. Uh, I hope it's coming out good. We'll see. But... It's still, um, it's still cooking down. It's still, um, you know, kicking off some moisture and thickening up, thickening up the soup. And you can't feel this, but as I put the spoon through it, I can feel that. I can just feel that the that the uh, vegetables are still a little solid. They're still a little not not cooked yet. So I'm gonna let it go for another few minutes, and you know, I'll, I'll just check it as we go. Okay, so now it's been boiling for a while. Check the. Uh, Carrots, the right consistency, so are the uh, potatoes. They also could take a little longer to cook. And I probably can't see it, but it's cooked down because it leaves a rim where, where the liquid initially was. And as it, as it evaporates off, you can see the, uh, the initial starting point. But I checked it in between takes. Everything's ready. It's good consistency. The last step, add half a cup of hot sauce and the, uh, and the clams. And I wait to the end because I don't want the hot sauce to, 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 um, to evaporate off. And I wait to the end for the clams because, first of all, they're pre-cooked. But even if they were raw, they cook real fast. And if you overcook them, they get rubbery. And they're going to continue to cook um, even after you take it off the heat. And all I do, the last step was I mix it in. That's all I'm doing, mixing it in. And you can see every time you put something in it, even if it's a very small volume, it stops boiling because it's that little, that little extra coolness turns the boil off. It, you know, it brings it under the boil point. But um, that's it. It's done. I'm going to take it off the heat. And uh, we, need it. we need to. We need a sample. Okay, now it's time. Time for the, for the payoff. And what I love about this, the soup, is that I mean, it so good just sitting here very versatile say you want something a little more hearty come home you have some soup soup's already in the fridge i get this heated up you can throw some elbows some macaroni and what i use is ramen noodles i would have actually i would have just thrown this in when it was at the final final boil stage which took a couple minutes to, to soften these up and we had a little bit of ramen or you know macaroni with uh with my soup, I'm just not in a ramen, not in the mood right now for the ramen noodles. But a lot of times, this is what I have for dinner. I'll have some of the soup. I'll make some, mac throw some macaroni in. I take the pot. I put the entire pot is already in my fridge, just sitting there. And uh, I, when I want some, I'll take it out. Get a little saucepan. Heat up what I want. If I want to throw some some macaroni, I'll just throw it in. Throw it in as I'm heating it up. Bring it to a boil. And, you know, you can use angel hair, you can use ramen, you can use whatever, elbows, it doesn't matter. A little Parmesan cheese, and, I mean, I'm so very excited with this, I'm going to have a little wine. A little, now, I use white wine, I, I, I don't like red wine. Probably, you know, if you're a, a, a wine pair, you're probably going to want red wine with this, or rosé. I don't like red wine. Very little, very few red wines I like. I, I love red, white wine though. So, even with steak, I drink white wine. I don't break the rules. What can you do? A little wine here. I'll finish it off. 
wasn't much left there anyhow. But let's see how this just works out. You know you're eating seafood. For good chowder. When you eat this, perfect heat, perfect spice. Uh, it's, it's the ultimate comfort food. I mean, this is comfort food. There's nothing wrong. There's nothing bad about it. It's healthy for you. Um, it, it just it, it just tastes, you know, you, you feel like you're in New England, you know, when, you, when you're eating this. Just, it's a, you can't describe it. You got to have it. Want, come on over. Just come on over. I, we'll, we'll have some, you know. What I'm going to do, right after I turn this video off, I'm going to take the soup. I'm going to put it in a big cup. I'm going to bring my wine. I'm going to get a cigar. And I'm going to go out back. It's a nice chilly night. This is, you know, a nice chilly, chilly autumn day, you know. And I'm going to light up my cigar. I'm going to have my soup and some wine. And I'm going to light my cigar up. Let me uh, toast to, to good health and good cheer. This is a Riesling. Riesling Chardonnay. Chardonnay Riesling from Brickstone Cellars, which is in upstate or western New York in the Finger Lakes region. Bet you didn't know this. Finger Lakes region in New York State, best wine, wine country ever. Rivals California and rivals France. Anyhow, that's it. I, this is a tremendous, please, you know, try it. Make it home. It'll take you maybe, maybe 45 minutes to make. You won't regret it. It's a, it's just a tremendous, a tremendous Manhattan clam chowder. And uh, thanks for watching. I'm going to bring you, I'm going to be bringing you the, the Culinary Council is going to be bringing you many more of the, of the, of the home-cooked meals that I make that are healthy and uh, nutritious. <laughs>